Okay, today guys, I'm gonna teach you how to paint a wine glass with acrylic. I'm gonna start to rough in the background. I'm using phthalo blue, and I'm mixing it with a little bit of red uh, and a little bit of black to try and neutralize it. You can see it's looking a little gray green here. I'm trying to add some white to bring that back out. Still not happy with that, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch blues. I'm using this Thalo blue, which is a cool blue. It's pretty good for greens and stuff. And I'm gonna switch to this ultramarine. It's a great warm blue, a little more purpley like the cloth that's behind this here. Notice how I'm painting wet into wet. I'm not waiting for the paint to dry. In fact, I'm trying to work quickly. Uh, and paint it in there. The painting videos are at three times speed. Now here I use this indigo blue that I have, but you can really just mix black with some of the blues to get that dark color. Um, I just happen to have it. Blending it wet to wet, continuously shifting the color, adding more white, adding more blue as I go. You'll see I'll be working on this background throughout the whole process. I think the variety of color that you get working this way creates a much more natural, uh, much more light inspired feel than if I was to just paint it all one solid flat color. And I can use my brush strokes to uh, create the, the draperies movement. Here I'm using a mixture of burnt sienna and black to start laying in that butcher block and the grapes in the front. The uh, If you don't have burnt sienna, you probably don't, you can mix cadmium red, black, and yellow. And then here I've got a little white mix back into it, but black, cadmium red, and cadmium yellow would make a nice burnt sienna color that you could use. What's really cool about this painting is the person who painted it, or who took the picture, I'm painting this, but the person who's painting it has made some really smart choices. You've got an almost all blue and orange palette, and you've got this kind of great complementary palette. Here I go, I'm roughing in this glass. I'm going to keep playing with the proportions and the shapes. Uh, in the end, I don't really get it right. Uh, the bottom of the wine glass isn't quite right, but uh, I'm just kind of trying to demo rendering it quickly. So hopefully you get the information you need from this. If I was to take more time with this, take more time with the proportions, I might uh, have been more successful with that part of it. Again, using background color, kind of pushing and pulling, reshaping some of this. Mixing it wet to wet. If I've got a dark color there and I want to make it lighter, I have to go much lighter than I actually want it because it's going to mix with the color that's already there. Here I go, I, I think the glass is too small, so I'm just recreating the glass bigger, leaving the old lines. Again, those are those paths in the sand that'll help me find my way if I get lost. Observing. What's really cool, what I noticed while painting this is, on the left side of the glass, you can see the reflection of a person with the sliding glass window behind her. On the right side, that entire image is flipped upside down. So those lights on the right side are actually the upside down version of that same part. Looking for some darks, seeing how the lights bent that uh, shadow on the drapery. I'll refine these windows and that, the people in them over and over again, again, push the dark. You'll notice when I repaint this person, I'm going to do it real dark just because it's mixing with the colors that are already there. You can mix it to the color you want instead of waiting for it to dry. I have not waited for any of this to dry. I'm using that burnt sienna color now, but I'm trying to mix it with the blue so that it looks like it's more shifted because you could kind of see the blue through it. I'm also exaggerating those vertical strokes coming down 
the glass. I'm exaggerating what I'm actually seeing. I didn't think that was uh, translucent enough, so I added a little more blue into this color. That's the butcher block reflecting in the glass. Some of this is going to get exaggerated. I think it's okay. Again with that light. This time I'm using a, a much uh, wider blue, pushing it a little further. This is when I realized that person is upside down there. So now I'm trying to, to show that. And then this right here, this is the actual reflection of that person. So you can kind of see them, in like a faded shadow of them in the background. Reworking all that again. Getting some of those strong colored lights that I'm seeing, reflections. And I love the way the orange and the blue work together. It's really such a nice uh, color combination. Kind of goes to show, you know, you could be great at painting, but taking a good picture is important too. So you'll notice that the butcher block gets like bent up into the stem there. You get a lot of real focused lights. Some of the lights you're seeing on the glass are just the sheen from the real wet paint. As it dries, you'll see that some of that sheen comes out of it. Here I'm going in with even more white blue. Getting closer to true white. Looking for places where it might sit or it might pop. This is some of that exaggeration. It's not quite this intense, but I feel like it's uh, it helps give that feeling of glass, to add that strong drama. And it's there, it's just not necessarily there as strong as I'm showing it some places. Not spending really any time on the cheese, just kind of finishing off that top. Um, awesome. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. And good luck with your paintings.